street. I can't help but wonder if it's the best idea to keep splitting up and wandering off. Um, We've all had time know. to ourselves to think. I believe we should stay together now. You've come so far, Kika. In a way, I'm not good at him. conversations. Margaret gazes at me finally. I catch Margaret's eyes and we spend a moment sharing a gentle connection. For a brief moment, all of, all of the troublesome uh, concerns seem to float away from our minds and we enjoy each other's company. God is fed up with waiting. Bridges are late. If they don't arrive as soon as darkness falls, there's no telling exactly how long before they do. Oh god. Millie's face immediately sours and he isn't he isn't able to stay silent about his feelings. So we're going to waste our time standing idly by. There's hardly enough time to make the trip as it is. What are we gonna do? What? Well, I'm sorry, but for Mille, real quick. What the fuck we gonna do with the bridge? Like, we can't make the bridge appear unless you got fucking earth bending or something. And we'll literally, this is like all we can do is wait. Okay. Whatever magic controlling the bridges is inconsistent, humans haven't found a way to impact it. We can only do temporary physical damage to the boards. Oh. Wait, it's magic? Oh, okay. But Millie is still displeased. Margaret moves into discussion. Her mood is rapidly declining as well. Then what should we do? We shouldn't stay on the calm, shore if the calm, monsters could be coming towards us at any moment. Calm down. Love you. The guy closes his eyes and suddenly looks very worn down. Staying in the center of the island is the safest option. However, there's the risk that we may not be able to reach the bridges when they do rise. That's true, too. Thomas could have taken full control of the shore by then. True. My brows involuntarily, uh, involuntarily knit together. I don't like the sound of taking additional risk in an area that is already so dangerous, but our options are thin. I will not be kept on this island for another day, so the shore is where I will be. You may wait at the edge of the forest, or even at the center of the island if you fear being attacked. Don't, don't give me the question. I, I sort of want to stay here with him because otherwise, like he just said right there, so he's not going to die. Yeah, he's not gonna allow himself to die at least because you know he knows way too many tricks for him to die So I sort of want to stay here with the guy come between us and you fail to make it to the bridges I will leave you behind. And that's why I said I would probably stay here because yeah, I knew that Emily spits hatefully under his back. Of course you would okay, He's already he's already said that he would like not even right then in general He he, he said it earlier is I will leave you True generosity is not something I would expect from the guide, but that is not the conversation we need to have at this moment. The guide has made, made his decision, we must make ours. If you were staying by the shore, perhaps I could be positioned somewhat further back from you, and then the others could stay further back still. That would keep us safer, without having any major gaps of darkness between us and the shore. Good suggestion, Kika. I'd say that's likely our best option, and we don't have time to come up with any other way regardless. No, we're doing that. Settled on the matter, the three of us begin to move, move away from the guide. He pays little attention to us, instead silently fixing his eyes on the water. If we're going to do that... Bamilla needs to be in the back. I probably need to be the third. And Margaret needs to be where I am. Because... Training-wise... Well, okay, not training-wise. Body-wise, physical fitness, okay? Fitness. Me and Bamili probably have more fitness than Margaret, and the guide's fine. We're not, we're not worried about him. More than Margaret. And in this situation, it's keeping up speed-wise, quickness, and stamina, obviously. So if it came down to being able to dodge Nixie's to run to the bridge, our best option for who would probably be the best if they had to do that job would probably be Melly or uh, me. So I don't think Margaret should be that one. I think Margaret should be a little closer to the guide. But, you know, apparently we've made our decision. I take my place in the, mid the middle of the shore while Bamili and Margaret hover closer to the island's core on the, one line on the line between dirt and sand. After regaining a sense of where they are, I turn my gaze ahead. At first, I think I'm being fooled by the fog. There are several white dots uh, playing along the edges of the water. And no, all those are eyes, most likely. Dark globs begin to surface, and I see them for what they are. Eyes. So many white, dribbling eyes gleaming sharply against their pitch black bodies. As the Nixies bob up and down, they surface and disappear in a loop, each time more sets of eyes and closer, surveying us more intently. 
Then they cr then they cackle. The sound is atrocious, gurgling, then turning high pitched as they seem to take full stock of us. The lights in their eyes somehow seem seem brighter as the first of the Nixie dig their claws into the sand and begin dragging themselves upon the shore. I plant my feet th firmer. A shrill a, a shrill shriek pierces the air, accompanied by a tail a tail hail to hiss. I whip my head backwards towards the sound, only to be greeted by cold black darkness. I cry out desperately into the void where Margaret and Millie stood. What happened? That's also a reason. If they're doing that and they're trying to look at me, this is an island. I don't give a fuck what you're doing. You have the other side of you, every other angle to worry about. At least when there were all four of us were in that on the shore, we could see everywhere. When you're in the middle, you have to pay attention to everywhere. And when it's only one person doing that, Oh, hell no. You have like a billion blind spots. There was a prowler in the woods. I didn't notice it until it was already too close to me. I dropped my lantern when I saw Fuck. it. The light was enough to drive it away, but now it's gone. Shattered. Wait, so now we only have two lanterns, right? I... We don't have an issue. I swear, swear, if I skirt my head back to make sure the shore is still clear before I sprint over to release them from the darkness with my own light. All right, you guys are moving up here with me. Come here. Margaret stares down at the ground dejectedly when I arrive. Familia has his, he his hand placed on her shoulder. I didn't see the thing either. The monster blended in far too well with the dark, crooked trees of this place. That well, it's not just that. Also, their bodies are dark, literally just black. Like we're talking midnight black, like just. Like they make an African look light skin. I'm black, okay. I can I can say that, all right. Before everybody gets made, I am African American. So <laughs> I feel like even then, some people are gonna get pissed about it. I'm just like, come on, okay. I just made a joke. Calm down, all right. But basically, their bodies are all black. Anybody who knows anything about anything, they look like a ninja in the darkness. You know, they're not easy to spot. All you're gonna see is the white eyes, and then that just makes them look like a weird ass like anime character thing that you're looking at. Or the typical monster lurking in the dark sort of vibe. So you're not gonna notice them unless you look at them in the eyes. Or they make a noise. He gives me a, a sad smile as I approach the two we closer. Make a small fire for light. Ah. I, I don't know. Margaret sniffles loudly. That may work for now, but what will we do once we're back on the bridges? I go in the middle, you two be on my right and left. We will manage. I speak firmly, trying to assure her I can't even guess how effective that the attempt was. We really begins to gra uh, gather dry twigs, stones, and grass to craft fire. How about in, uh, before we leave? And girl, don't be don't be rolling my, don't be rolling your eyes at me. Uh, before we go, if we have the time, go ahead and grab like some sticks, because obviously we want to go ahead and be ready just so we can add more to the fire, because we don't know how long it's gonna be. But then at the same time, right before we go, light a stick on fire. We got a torch, damn it. I'm thinking. Using my Nogla Den. Margaret moves to help him. Though she still looks terribly upset. I feel awful. It wasn't her fault. Can I give her like a hug? No. We dig a few inches uh, down in the sand, uh, sandy soil before making an edging with the rocks to stop a fire from giving us a repeat of last night. I layer the fuel quickly and light a match at the base of the pit. Have we made sure the guide hasn't left while doing this? Because this isn't a fast like a process. And nobody's watching the guide or the shoreline. He sure enough would have bolted. Margaret uh, stokes the fire with Bimele feeding it in twigs. The grass ignites easily and, sh and showers the area with enough light to keep anything else that may be lurking in the forest at bay. I release a, d a discreet sigh. We're, luck we're truly lucky no one was injured or lost during this ordeal. I keep the thought uh, to myself, however, hearing it would only make Margaret feel worse. Yes. You should go back to your position, Kika. It will all be for nothing if we can't make it onto the bridges in the first place. Okay. Right. I force myself to sound bold. We're going to get through this. Good job. Is is he still there, by the way? Margaret attempts to smile at me and Bamili waves as I cautiously uh, back up to my original position. I return my full focus to shore as we fear this is becoming a pressing situation. More prowlers rose from the waters while my attention was on those two. 
They're surrounding the guide on both sides. The only way to gain distance from them would be to delve further into the island. Yet the guide shows no signs of giving up his position. He remains where he is, resolved to keep all the monsters near him in, in his sight. He's like, if one of these guys makes a fucking move, I swear to God, I'm gonna kill a bitch. He's like, I don't care. I will kill you guys with light, alright? I'm gonna be killing you guys like the fucking red flower on fucking Jungle Book. Alright, I grow more unnerved the longer I watch this. The guide seemed imprevious to the dangers of Sinellis, and this is the first case where I can't tell whether he will continue to be fine as always or not. It's a, distre a distressing notion. As they creep even closer, I can't stay silent any longer. Your safety is most important. Consider retreating. He's not gonna do it. He doesn't face me, but replies. I cannot do that. Nixie recognized signs of weakness. Backing away will only increase the odds of them attacking. Oh, it's one of the- oh, okay. So it's like a literal animal. Like, like if you like lock faces with like certain animals, like, well not certain animals, but just about any animal. Even if you guys just sit there, as long as you're not like scared and showing obviously you are scared that uh, won't attack. Like some of them will just look at you and won't do anything. They'll just pass by. But some of them, if you show like a scaredness to it, then they'll attack because you're scared or you're doing something frantic or, you know. I get that. I grip my lantern tighter as I swallow hard. What can I do? So what do you want to do? Like you got to be damn straight about the situation. I'm going to save one more time. As if to answer my own question, I thought whisper, uh, thought whispers into my mind, and I looked down at the lantern in my hand. I could throw it as long as I don't get, let it get too far down the down the shore. It doesn't seem plausible that a Nixie could take it. I uh, let's not. But if I do lose the lantern, especially after Margaret lost hers only moments ago, then watch. Yeah, no, calm down. Okay, we gotta be we gotta be level headed here. We're supposed to be. Calm, okay? Calm and collective. We got this. Don't do anything rash. <sighs> I can't act rational here. The guide has managed through every situation. We've been th uh, we've been through as well as countless others. We did not bear witness to. I resolve to continue with uh, what we've planned and keep my position. Exactly. We need to be uh, stone cold here. Without flinching, the guide keeps hold of our position on the waterline. I periodically switch between watching him, the others, and the rest of the shore. As I scan the forest, there's sting, st a stinging groan. Was that the guide? It can't be. I stand rigid in shock, a painful prickling sensation going down my back before wh whipping around to see the face the truth. He's crouched down low on the ground, staring forcefully at a group of Nixie head on. There's a whole other group of monsters rap r rapidly crawling back into the water. I step forward with a shout, but he puts out, he puts out one hand to halt me. I do not go further. I and those creatures motionally watch for what he will do. His fingers curl tightly around the upper half of his staff. With great effort, he begins to rise to his unstable feet. He's about to... If they attack him, he's about to whoop their ass with that staff. Like, he's Donatello. Like, you... Mm, he's gonna be like the old grandpa of any goddamn store with a cane and beat their ass. The moment he is fully upright, the guide aggressively swings his lantern at the encroaching Nixie. He catches them completely off guard and they scatter to rejoin the rest in the black depths. Good job. Wait, so literally? Oh, if you think about it, you can do that like a lot. You would have to be smart about it, obviously. And then you can scare him off. The guide crumples back into the sand, uh, back into the sand unceremoniously. I can hear his ragged breaths as he regains his composure. He tugs at one side of his cloak, bringing it closer around himself. It covers up a dark, uh, growing stain creeping through his right pant leg. Even while collapsed, he seems compelled to hide his fra uh, fragility. Is that admirable or saddening? Saddening. A little bit of both. I do not know anymore. The guide roughly pulls himself back up to his feet and forces himself to remain standing. The rest of us may must remain strong as well if we are to survive this night. Gripping my lantern, I watch over everything and everyone is in sight vigilantly. After an untold period of time, the water begins to stir. There's an unusual gurgling, a sound I never thought I would uh, be relieved to hear. Slowly creakling, the bridges make their nightly appearance. Good. And if you think about it, you know, 
like going through this yeah i'm breaking character real quick going through this you know how long this time period had to feel stress wise like even if this was like 10 to 30 minutes this would feel about like five hours it would stress the fuck out of you so now this is an overwhelming uh, overwhelming cruel environment this is this island had felt like a safe haven such a such a short time ago but that has been twisted to the point where i'm grateful for a chance to return to the maze and we may not even reach that. In all honesty, after this island, I don't know if I'm leaving this island. And if I do, I am walking that goddamn shoreline. I'm not crossing this lake again. <laughs> More Nixie are breaching the water and wrenching themselves into the sand. The guide signals to all we of us. To leave. Yes, we do. Thanks to his position on the shore, the guide is able to board the bridges without confrontation. For the rest of us, however, the Nixie begin to crowd the opening. It appears they want to get, get on themselves. We have desperately little time before we'll be cut off from the guide. I look to my lantern. Will, will this light alone be enough to cause them to disperse? Come on! I'm gonna save one more time because I got a feeling she's about to say throw the lantern, and I don't want to because then we we need it on the bridge. Margaret shout cuts straight through my thoughts. Good. Yes, she did. How can you read my conscience? I, I'm, I was, I didn't even tell you the thought. You're such a, mm, mm, I love this girl. See, this is why we had that fine look earlier. She, she somehow now can hear me, the conscious talking, and she made a torch. That's what I was talking about. Thank you, thank you. That was so smart. She's advancing towards me, holding onto a heavy stick with the end set on fire as a makeshift torch. The sight is striking. I'm so proud of this girl. It won't last long. We need to get through now. You're right. Let's go. She needs the. She needs not to say more. The three of us push uh, our way forward as we advance. Margaret replays her. We'll her toss relays the branch when we get close. The smoke spewing off this thing is making it even harder to see than usual. So you tell me when it's time, Kika. Oh God. I can do that. Don't make. Don't make that a choice, please. If it is, I'm a fuck it right on up. I'll save again. Potatoes, tomatoes, lamb, rice, raw, beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, chicken, turkeys, rat, you name it. Beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, lamb, rams, raw, raw, beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, chicken, turkeys, chicken, turkeys, beans, greens.